So right here are some physics practice questions that really solidify your understanding and preparation for Jam 2025. So let's go. The first one here is we're told that the resultant of two forces is 50 Newton. If the forces are perpendicular to each other and one of them makes an angle of 30 degrees with the resultant, we have to find the magnitude of that particular one. Okay, so just quickly do a rough sketch here like this. So you have two forces that are at right angles. You can see it from here that they are perpendicular. So that means they are at right angles to each other. So put this sign here. Okay, then just draw the resultant like this. This is the resultant here. So this is with the first force. You can call this on F1 and you can call this on F2. But from the question, you are told that one of these forces, maybe F1 and F2, that one of them makes an angle of 30 degrees with the resultant. So since this is the resultant, and let me assume this is the force that makes an angle of 30 degrees with the resultant. So I'm just going to write 30 here now. 30 degrees. So you have to find the magnitude of this particular one because this is the one that is making an angle of 30 degrees with the resultant. So just use the simple formula F1 is equals to R cos 30 degrees. Okay, that's the formula to use. So F1 is what you're looking for. R from this question is 50. So just write 50 here. Yeah, that would be 50 cos 30. So cos 30 is 0 0.8660. So that would be 50 times 0.8660. So if you press this out, you're going to get 43.3 Newton. So that's option E, as you can see here. Okay, move to the next one. The next one is when a brick is taken from the Earth's surface to the moon, its mass is dash. So remember the fact that weight is equal to mg. So this mass is constant. Mass is always constant, but weight changes depending on the value of attraction to gravity. So when a brick is taken from the Earth's surface to the moon, its mass becomes zero, reduces, increases. No, the mass remains constant because mass of a body is a constant okay the next one is the pair of physical quantities that are scalar only are the pair of physical quantities that are scalar only are so we need to check the ones that are scalar so impulse is a vector quantity moment moment is a vector quantity because it involves force momentum to the same thing length is scalar but displacement is vector quantity so it's only just two here that involves Scalar, scalar, volume is scalar quantity and area is also scalar quantity. So the answer is option A. Now for the fifth question, but to that, a simple pendulum of length 0.4 meter has a period of 2 seconds. What is the period of a similar pendulum of length 0.8 meter at the same place? So first of all, remember the formula for a simple pendulum, which is given by T is equal to So this is the formula here. Very important formula. You can see that 2 pi is a constant. Okay, pi is a constant. G is also a constant because we are told that it is at the same place. So what you just what we just need is only t and l. So t is equal to square root of l. From here, you can get t squared is equal to l. Now this relationship can be turned into a formula because this is a direct relationship. You can turn into a formula like t1 squared over l1 is equal to t2 squared. So from here, you just pick out all these values from the question. So let's check the question now. You see the first value you are giving. This L1 here, that's 0.4. In the period T1 is 2. So this is L2 here. So you have to find T2. What is the period? I'm looking for T2. So just slot everything there. So you have T1. T1 is 2 squared divided by L1 is there. That's 0.4. So write 0.4 here. Is equals to t2 is what i'm looking for i'm going to divide this by l2 you are, gi are giving l2 that's 0 0.8 so you just write 0 0.8 here so you cross multiply you're going to get 2 squared times 0.8 is equals to t2 squared times 0.4 then from here this is already 4 Okay, so that's 4 times 0.8 is equals to 
t2 squared times 0.4 so that's divided by side by 0.4 okay so t2 squared will be 4 times 0.8 so we are dividing that by 0.4 so right now you call this 2 0.4 in 0.8 that will give you 2 so you have 2 times 4 2 times 4 that will give you 8 so t squared is equal to 8 then from here you can find t2 which will be the square root of 8 so t2 will just be the square root of 8 and the square root of 8 is 2 root 2 okay if you use sort method you get 2 root 2 as the answer you see it right there as option a number six a train with an initial velocity of 20 meter per second is subjected to a uniform deceleration of 2 meter per second squared you have to find the time required to bring the train to a complete halt so let's pick the given values from the question so we have initial velocity that is u right so u is 20 then deceleration that's acceleration negative acceleration that's minus 2 as you can see from here then you have to find time so since the train is coming to a stop complete hot that means the final velocity is zero because it's stopping so we're looking for time so just use the equation v equals to u plus a t so if you substitute there this one will be zero the u in the question is 20 acceleration is negative because this is deceleration then you have 2t then just solve this you have minus 20 equals to minus 2t then divide will start by minus 2 then you get your answer as 10 10 seconds so since the answer is 10 you can check it there so that's deceleration now you have to calculate the number seven calculate the apparent weight loss of a man weighing 70 kg in an elevator moving downwards with an acceleration of 1.5 meter per second squared now if you are in an elevator and the elevator is moving downwards your apparent loss in weight will be given by this formula w is equals to m into g minus a that's your apparent loss in weight because the elevator is moving downwards and you are also inside the elevator you're going, you're going to feel a degree of weightlessness though you're not going to be weightless but you feel lighter okay so your loss in weight is given by this formula so g is 9.8 meter per second squared and the mass is 70 so let's plug that in here so that will be 70 into 9.8 minus the acceleration in the question is 1.5 that will be 70 times now 9.8 minus 1.5 will give you 8.3 so you need to multiply 70 times 8.3 to get the final answer so if you multiply that you're going to get 581 newton the answer is option d okay so right on a piece of cork floats in a liquid what fraction of its volume will be immersed in the liquid so they gave the density of the cork which is the material involved and density of the liquid now the formula to use this is flotation principle which states that when a body floats on a liquid or a fluid it displaces its own weight of the fluid on which it floats so for flotation to occur then w must be equals to the weight of that fluid must be equal to the upthrust so all you have to do in this question is just find the ratio of the two densities okay find the ratio of the two densities so you're going to do density of the substance divided by density of the liquid so if you do that density of the substance in this question is 0.25 times 10 to the power 3 as you can see from here so that will be 0.25 times 10 to the power 3 so you divide that by the density of the liquid which is this one here 1.25 times 10 to the power 3 so 10 to the power 3 becomes 10 to the power 3 then you're going to have 0.25 divided by 1.25 so if you just do this very quick that will be 25 divided by 125 because this you're going to get 1 over 5 and 1 over 5 is the same thing as 0.2 so that's a fraction of the volume that will be immersed in the liquid so that's the answer an object is moving with a velocity of five meters per second 
at what height must a similar body be situated to have a potential energy equal in value with the kinetic energy of the moving body? So with this one here, you want the kinetic energy of the body that, is, that was initially moving with this speed to be equal to the potential energy of another object, as in at what height we place that object. So you have the body that is moving like this already. This is body one. Then there's another body two that is coming down. So you want two of them to have the same, like, potential energy of this one should be equal to the kinetic energy of this one so you just write the formula for kinetic energy so you want ke to be equal to pe i know ke is half mv squared so this is half mv squared is equal to mgh which is the formula for potential energy so the, on the question you see that it is a similar body so that means the mass is the same so since it's a similar body the mass will cancel out like this so you're going to have v squared over 2 is equal to gh so your target is to find h because at what height but before you find that check for the velocity first velocity is 5 as you can see so just put your 5 there so this will be 5 squared divided by 2 is equal to now your g is given by 10 meter per second squared as you can see from here on the question 10 meter per second squared so just slot that in here that will be 10 times h so this will be 25 over 2 equals to 10 h then h will be 25 divided by 20 so if we divide 25 by 20 you're going to get 1.25 now let's check that in the option there okay it's not actually there but 1.25 is the same thing as 1.3 so the answer is option a so the next one, which is number 10, is you are told that if a pump is capable of lifting 500 kg of water through a vertical height of 60 meters in 15 minutes, you have to find the power of the pump. You need to remember something that power, or let me say, yes, power is energy divided by time. This energy is also the same thing as work done. So you can say power is work done. Work done is MGH first line is distance divided by time so in this question they give us the time the time is 15 minutes but we must convert it to to seconds so the mass is 5000 your g is 10 and your height is in the question you can see 60 so everything is already given to you so let's just plug everything into this formula from the question you see the mass of the pump there that is 5000 times g is 10 our height is 60 your time is 15 so you are dividing this by 15. For that 15 you need to convert it to seconds so 60 we cancel 60 5 in 15 that's 3 5 in 5000 that would give you 1000 then 3 year 1 3 in 10 that will give you 3.3 so you have 3.3 times 1000 which is the same thing as 3.3 times 10 is to power 3 as you can see from here okay so the answer is option a Okay, so you gain something from this short video. If you have gained something, make sure you smash that like button, click the follow button, and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed. Peace.